The Ghana Football Association President Kwesi Nyantechi has resigned. Now, his resignation comes after a committee meeting, an executive committee this meeting, man. in the last few days. Uh, you know, Kwesi Nyantechi has been in the news at an expose by investigative journalist Anas Arimeo Anas, which Anas himself indicated was going to shake the very foundation of football in the country. As you are aware, Kwesi Nyantechi was also handed a 90 days ban today from all football related activities by world football governing body FIFA. What the implication of this is, we'll find out shortly. This decision uh, also by government for the GFA to be dissolved. You know, government has also been defending that decision. It was an order from President Kofuado that the GFA be dissolved. We have all of that uh, plus matters uh, falling out from the resignation of the president of GFA tonight as... Uh, we we break down the issues on PM Express. Uh, join us and stay with us because I have the right person to discuss this issue. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. We are back in the Jiffy. Welcome back. Kujo Fiano is the chairman for the Ghana League Clubs Association, Galka, and he joins me in the studio for this discussion. Good evening to you. And it's very refreshing to see you here. Yeah, it's good to be here. It's been a very busy day for football pundits, right? Uh, from Monday, we've not had any rest, but there's a job, job to be done and we have to do it. Well, you've always advocated that uh, the president resigns in the midst of all these uh, allegations and videos of him um, claiming some sum of money and all of that. And um, how does it come across to you that the GFA president has resigned? I would want to start by saying that uh, let me congratulate him for taking that bold decision, even though it was a bit late in the day. Because uh, having heard and having seen some of the, the promos and having engaged himself in some of those activities, knowing very well that whether it could be a setup or whatever, and uh, that job being done by Hamas, should have informed him to jump ship earlier than he did this afternoon. Because for the president of the land to order the CID to chase after you, uh, he did the best thing. He cut short his stay on official duties for CAF, came down, and I think that should have been the time. He should have tenured his relation. But as I said, better late than never. Mm. So his resignation, we are told, happened after an executive committee meeting. Um, do you know what really transpired in this executive meeting? The executive committee, apart from Congress, is the second highest decision-making body of the association. And uh, definitely, in fairness to the members, the group that he's led for all these years, it was good for him to have met them Tell them like Jesus did to his disciples mm. that gentlemen and a lady, the time I come for me to say goodbye. I'm leaving you behind to carry on the job that so it, it was one of those emergency meetings that the constitution allowed uh, the association to hold. So he couldn't have taken this major decision on the blind side of the executive committee. Well, the other blow we've had today is a 90-day ban which uh, the World uh, Football Governing Body FIFA has placed on uh, Kwesi Nyantichi. We'll be looking at its implication on Ghana football. But first, uh, there's this word provisional, which makes the 90 days... Um, we really don't know what the provisional means. When, so if when you go help, further down, it's provisional because more days could be added to it. Okay. So they are saying that if they've not exhausted the investigations, uh, additional 45 days will be added. Okay. So it could be 100 days, it could be 120 days, it could be the 135 days. Mm. Okay, so that's what the provisional yes. means. It's not, it, it doesn't mean that it could reduce, but yeah, rather yeah, it, it could, could increase. Could right. Uh, because you are, you are investigating one of the executive members of that, so they need to do the due diligence and make sure that they don't give him a raw deal. Having explained that, uh, let's look at what implications this 90-day ban uh, on, uh, will have on football in Ghana. The first or the topmost will be the embarrassment that that decision costs uh, Ghana. 
here where we all hailed the gentleman, the first Ghanaian to have read that stage. Vice, uh, Vi uh, an executive council member, member, and the, the first vice president of CAF. Of CAF. And very soon will have gone for the presidency. The presidency. And what we know is that FIFA is trying to do some rotational presidency. Mm. So it will come to a point an African will be asked to head FIFA. Mm. So if he becomes the 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 chair the president of CAF, he could have been lucky enough to benefit from that rotational arrangement. So we've lost a great deal um, both at the world platform and the continental platform. It's mm. a big blow to Ghana. Right. Uh, the circumstances surrounding the exit is uh, not good or pleasing to the eye, what we saw in the video. Mm. I, 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 I was wondering what really came over him. Okay. Because if you listen to someone, he's a very intelligent gentleman. Yeah. You cannot take it away from him. Definitely. Very, very, very intelligent, very sharp. Mm. So I, I, I was wondering what really happened to him when he let himself go and uh, he was, he was, he was just talking. Going as, on and going on, and on, on, on and on and on and on. Mm. And he should have, he should have checked the demeanor of the one he was discussing. The guy wasn't talking much. Right. The guy wasn't talking much. That should have alerted him that no, what at all is happening? I'm doing the talking. So, too bad for Ghana football. Mm. Uh, Thirteen years, very, very brilliant. Uh, um, profession he's done very well for ghana football okay. and i believe that he should have visited on a better note than well. of course uh, for 13 years he's been at the ghana football association and of course uh, that wasn't with, uh, it was not without allegations of corruption and all of that but let's talk about some of the good things that he's done we, we, he, he of course so many he's things he's raised the bar things. when it comes to the presidency of the fa he brought a lot to bear on that position you cannot take it away from him um, under his tenureship, Africa won its first and as now the only world trophy at the under-20 level. Mm. We've won the under-17 before his assumption of office. But he assumed office and we won the under-20 World Cup. Since then, no African country had gone close to that achievement. Okay. That's one of the legacies he left behind. Ghana had been yearning to play in the World Cup. And he brought a lot of joy to Ghana when we qualified for the first ever World Cup 2006 in Germany. And you could see the feeling. We all felt proud to be Ghanaians when we saw our black stars. Those of us who were lucky to be there, those who watched it on the screen. He raised the brand. The black star brand became a, a world attraction. Our players were moving for bigger contracts. Michael S. and Co. became, we, he produced two um, Champions League Winners, Sule Montari, Michael Essien. He repeated it in 2010 in Africa. We made Africa proud, but at a point broke the heart of Africa mm. by Ketesi Suarez, who will have been the first African country to qualify for the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Mm. He, he brought so much joy. But the flip side was Brazil 2014, with all the controversies and the bad publicity that we gave the country. Mm -hmm. And I think that at that point in time, that was when his uh, popularity and the goodwill of Ghanaian started diminishing. winning. And uh, that should have been the time. The problem with so West exit. Africans, uh, we don't know when to exit. Mm. We can, the list is so tall, politicians, Mugabe, Zuma, the list, countless. Mm. So I think he... I mean, just like we saw with Zinedine Zidane, yes. people were wondering why yes. you should resign you after should leave the stage. winning for your yeah. team. You but he thought that yes. it was the right time, time to leave. for him to exit. I also of took course, he exits with all the glory. Yes. And I think that... Um, I, I made that mistake in life and I regretted it when I won the league trophy for Ash Gold after 10, 11 years. I told myself that was the time to leave. I should leave the stage when the applaud was louder. Was louder. I listened to other opinions from, and I stayed on. I almost sent the team into relegation. Mm. So, so when the calling came, you should have taken advantage of that. Mm. And you will have been the most successful FA president. Mm. And from there, scandal after scandal, we're having issues with contracts that were being signed on behalf of clubs. The clubs on whose behalf the contracts are being signed we want to know what was in the contract, you will not be told. And it came to pass in the, the uh, another video that 
the company that was supposed to be the agent, there was no agency. Mm. But something was set aside, 20, 25 percent right. will have gone to an agent. Mm -hmm. The five percent should have gone will have gone to him. And gov that was a serious breach. Very when it comes serious. to governance. And, 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 and uh, I, 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 I pity uh, the FA president, being a lawyer, I wasn't expecting him to go at that level. Mm. I, I wasn't expecting. So uh, I think it was carried away. Too bad it is a learning curve for all of us. That when we get to the top, that is where it becomes hotter. In geography, we're told it becomes cooler when you get higher. But in other spheres of life, it becomes hotter when, when you get you, When you get higher. And it's really a bad time to bad be a time, Ghanaian, man. seriously. Yeah. Because I, I switched on my radio um, from yesterday to today. And the first story you see on BBC, uh, you hear on BBC, is uh, Ghana, corruption in Ghana football. And I feel so Before sad. Before I walked into the Accra International Conference Center, I asked myself a lot of questions. My family almost stopped me from viewing it because you had a husband, you have a father that had been in football for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And there was this um, promo that people are going to be caught, church people calling. At a point in time, when I said I was little, they said, Daddy, why don't you stay at home? What if your, your, your face then you pops get up? There, we, we, <laughs> <laughs> cannot there was no way we could control it yeah so i heaved a sigh of relief when i saw the director i saw the whole script coming on that they ended the video but the bad side of it was my association garaka our administrative manager administrative center was caught in the video right when some few hours to move in there i asked my accountant whether any of them were implicated in the video and he said no the gentleman that was being uh, trumpeted as the one who worked for Anas, a very close friend who worked with all of us in football, mm. was the one who did that. Okay. It made the risk level a bit higher. Mm. And I asked and I was told that, yes, he attempted giving my administrative assistant some money, but he refused. Lo and behold, I got there and, and I he saw him stacking in a drawer. That is very, very sad and it's, it's very it sad. Happen to anybody. And talking about the, uh, uh, talking about Galka, we know that um, there's been an announcement by the sports minister for all football activities to uh, cease. So we are not very sure the confusion is, is the Premier League coming up or not. Is it coming up? Luckily, the league, we've played week 15 already. The league is supposed to be on recess albeit some few outstanding matches. Mm. Uh, the FA was supposed to play the FA Cup this weekend. Uh, the clubs got their uh, TNT. That would have taken them to the venues to play the game. They were given letters to move to the area. Appointments were made to match officials to go. But uh, after a couple of hours, there was another release that all those matches have been postponed indefinitely. So Ghana football is on hold for now. So it's not coming off this No weekend. football activity. I don't know of the lower divisions, but if the FA has directed that there should be no football activity, I think we are all obliged to accept that. Wow. And, and that's one of the issues we're talking about. Now everything is coming to a standstill because of uh, one or two people yeah. who decided not to do the right and thing. And you cannot stop the players for, 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 from taking the allowance, their monthly salaries at the end of the month. That's how bad so it is. So now the investors, the Dr. Chase, the Domahinis, the Moses Parkers, what are they going to do? Uh, so it's, 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 it's a bad time for our football. Having spent so much time on litigation, you heard of the Olympics issue, injunction here, injunction there, injunction everywhere. At the end of the day, we've started and uh, we've hit a cold de sac But we just have to wait. We have course it. We football people have course it. Because there are, I, I didn't see any journalists being bribed in the video. I didn't see any trader being, it was the football people mm. who created this problem for ourselves. And I want to doff my heart for Michelle's Kukwe and uh, J.F. Benson, who at, at least brought some joy uh, the way they rejected the, the They approach. rejected yes. the price. But um, I, I was very sad to see that um, coaches, um, referees were bribed with as low as 150 cities. 300 cities, 700 cities, to change the fortunes of a team. That was very sad for me. And really, I wasn't comfortable at all. I was just looking forward to seeing the end credit roll so that 
that i mean that's the end of the video but i kept seeing more and more and more of that who should we blame for this whole thing because it looks like let me blame ourselves it's i wouldn't want to deep yeah into. i wouldn't let you waste our breath we need to blame ourselves we cannot behave as ostriches to say that we don't know that our game was embedded in corruption bribery and corruption we cannot say that we cannot look at people in the face and tell them that we are not aware we are very mindful of that and in night in 2015 I was then a member of the executive committee of the FA. During one of our meetings, we all agreed that that canker was eating deep into our game and it was a verge, on the verge of collapsing the game or destroying the game. So at ESCO, I'm talking about the highest decision-making body, apart from Congress. We all agreed that there was some, we needed to move with dispatch to make sure that that rot was cleared from the system. So. On ESCO, we have 10 regional chairmen, 10 clubmen. So we form the bulk of ESCO, the president, and then the other constituent bodies, 22. We all agreed because we have uh, ESCO members performing duties as match commissioners. Right. We had MCO members. So we were deeply involved. I could be appointed uh, a, 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 a match commissioner, be an ESCO member. So all of us, and we agreed that something should be done about it. And we started finding out what would be the, the most suitable way to go about it. Because you and I, you are football administrator, I'm a football administrator. We have agreed that we will not go back in, into those old things. You have decided not to do it. But I will decide to sneak behind you mm. to do something. Okay. And then when you start losing your games, your supporters will be on you. They wouldn't understand why you are losing. You are losing because you want to be upright. Okay, so we said okay, and it was the FA president. You see, what is intriguing was that it was the FA president, Mr. Christian Techi, who proposed ANAS that we should engage ANAS to investigate, to investigate and wow. expose the, the rot. The rot. Wow. In 2015. Wow. And uh, I was then the chairman of the media committee of the FA. So normally after our meetings, we do some press briefing that we share the highlights of those meetings. So I remember very well that I granted an interview and said, we have decided to hold a bull by the horns and we'll be engaging a nurse to help us get to the, get bottom, to the of bottom of this thing. And I remember very well after my exit from the executive committee, my brother Sani Dara made a profound statement that the GFA had engaged on us. And he was cautioning all football administrators, all stakeholders, to be very, 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 very cautious. careful, cautious. And if you are caught, you're not going to be spared. So maybe Anas even didn't have an idea about what was happening. Was happening. So I think we indirectly invited him. Instead of going officially to do I think we just said it as a scarecrow, but we have done somebody's attention to the fact that we have admitted That's that there was that thing there. So kind of I think he, he sneaked in and did what he did and exposed all of us to this embarrassment. Oh, I, um, I, I don't really know where to start from, but of course it's very interesting to get to know that you set up an investigative committee and you put yourself there for the committee to catch you red-handed. Yeah, yes. That's interesting. That's very interesting. But of course, we also don't know because uh, there's this confusion of uh, the president orders for the dissolution of the GFA. Um, I know the lawyers who are saying that we should be careful because the GFA is not a government institution and so the government may not have the right to dissolve the GFA and all of that. Um, what's your take on all these confusions? Yes, uh, definitely. So many ideas will come up when we know that FIFA will not be happy with some of these decisions. But let me go back in the year 1982, when Ghana qualified for the AFCON to be played in Libya. There was a decision to boycott the, the competition. And uh, the then president, the late Dr. Hilal Liman, came out with a fiat that the blaster will not participate in AFCON 1982. He took the 31st December revolution to get His Excellency J.J. Rawlings to reverse that decision. So, 
the president could make some of those orders. The president is an astute lawyer. He says, let's say, Nana Dua, Dan Kwa Kufuando. Mr. Kwesinian Techi is a lawyer. And I'm sure that a lot of thought will have gone into this decision. Uh, there is this cliche that we say that bringing that game into disrepute or bringing the name of association into disrepute. I am I not trying to hope for government, but I think that the intransigence in, on our part also might have led government to act in that manner. Mm. Here you are, this massive rot, and we're not seen to be acting to do something about it. We rather came out with a statement the following day justifying that we should be allowed to, it was somebody who set up people to do this and this and this and that and that and that. And the presidency was also brought into the fray. Okay. So, if we had acted with this patch, if people had decided to jump boat, I'm sure government would have done that. But, moving forward, the action had already been taken. Now, Aisha, if I should ask you to do a poll right now, as to how many Ghanaians support the action taken by it. I'm talking on moral grounds now. Right. Will we'll support government. I think we'll get about 95%. And indeed, government explained that it, it took that decision yes. I mean, because for public interest. Because at the interest. end of the day, you expect these disgruntled Ghanaians, those people that we've, 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 we've disgraced so much, to patronize our games. They are already not going. They already they've, they've shown it clear that they, 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 they are not interested in our activities. It is only the die-hard ones that are still trooping to the stage on, Monday, on Sunday toward the games. And this anger, and we should behave as a business as usual. No. So I am saying that if we had reacted swiftly ourselves, quickly, on, we all knew the expose would be coming out on Wednesday. Definitely. What stopped the FA Executive Committee calling for an emergency Executive Committee meeting mm. with other stakeholders? Okay that after watching the film the first day, some action sh should be taken. But oh, we haven't seen the tape. Who, whose interest is, is it for you to see the tape? I wanted to be clear myself because my family was really under pressure. That, Daddy, are you sure you're not in? How can you confirm to us that you're not in? So I need to go there. To confirm. Even when I was not having ticket, I tried as much as possible. And I was lucky enough to get a ticket to go and watch it. Okay. This, uh, the teaser started coming out ahead of the premiering. The premiering. So what stopped the, uh, the, the FA from demanding advanced copies? You wait until the thing is done. We are now waiting for, uh, to get that. They haven't given us copies. Blah, blah, blah. Ghanaians are not interested in you getting a copy. Ghanaians are interested in seeing the rot mm. and the way it will be cured. Mm. That's their concern. So if we had decided to play our matches even this weekend, okay. who will go to the stadium and watch. No, I, I'm sure nobody will do yes. that. Yes, and that will not be good for all of us. And as we speak now, we have a five-member emergency committee that are tasked with the responsibility of doing the day-to-day -day running of the league. The president is out. The vice president has been sacked a couple of weeks ago, so there's no vice president to take over. Mm. One other person, Mr. Edidoku, was also indicted in the video. So we are left with two. And our status, two people cannot take that decision because they haven't formed a quorum. We have about five executive committee members caught up there. We have the Northern Regional Chairman. So if he leaves, it means that Northern Region will have no representation. Okay. Who will seek their interest? We have Great Accra being represented by Mr. Didoku. Who will take care of that place? The Eastern Region Regional Chairman was also caught in there. Then the only lady on their school unfortunately, was also caught. And she represents the entire women spectrum of football. Yes. The security services. They play football. They, they don't play football. I was very sad to see yes. I mean, a woman also yes. being yes. caught yes. in this. He, she felt that she was set up. But then, she should like... It's no justification. Yes, there's no justification for, him to, for her to do that. So, we did not even need government to prompt us. We should have prompted ourselves that, look, all those guys who brought our name into this report, quickly, this is what I want to do with you. Look, we, 48 hours, there should be an emergency congress where decisions will be taken to bring back the, the lost confidence 
from our rank and file. Because as I said earlier, they are the patrons. They will save 10 CDs. They will save, save 5 CDs to come and watch, to come the and watch their game. So if through this they've decided they won't come, what happens to Ghana football? Mm. Very interesting. And I mean, the calls were coming basically because of Christine Yantichi. Now that Christine Yantichi has resigned, should we still dissolve the GFA? I've, I've just said in the GFA that others will have to follow. Even now, the FA, I don't know if I'm, is headless. Okay. There is no president, there's no vice president. So, bottom line, and it should be dissolved. It should be dissolved. Okay. If there were a vice president, yes, he steps in to hold a fort that a congress will have been called, that we've lost our president, are we going to do a by election, or the vice will hold on till the next elections in 2019. Okay. But here you are, we don't have a vice. We are going to lose another person to, in addition to that. So two people cannot take decision. Uh, you come to the referee's appointment committee. Out of the five, four of them have been captured in the, in the, in the video. Mm -hmm. So who will be selecting our referees for us? Mm -hmm. I, will be, I will just sit quietly, okay. allow the single person who didn't form a quorum to appoint referees for my mind. I will lose and I will lodge a protest that the appointing authority was not properly constituted. Okay, so um, I want you to join the conversation via Facebook uh, uh, um, uh, platform, uh, facebook.com slash join news on TV. And I'll be reading some of your messages very soon. I've seen some comments coming in on what you think of uh, Mr. Nancy's resignation. But if we want a dissolution of GFA, um, um, Mr. Fiano, how do you want the GFA reconstituted? Fortunately, unlike other countries, our forebears came about with this association of clubs, that is the Ghana League Clubs Association. And the composition of the Galka Congress or General Assembly is the same composition as the GFA Congress. So we, and it is the clubs that are members of the association, not we the human beings. I, am, I will be there representing maybe Ash Gold. Some will be there representing House of Folk. So, what we will call for will be an emergency congress. Okay. And all these issues will be brought to the fore. That in the view of members, depending on the majority, two-thirds of the majority, do we dissolve the entire executive committee? Or we should just uh, fix those, fill those gaps and wait till the general elections? Or... We put in an interim board. Because as we sit now, we saw from that video that a contract was supposed to be signed. Some agency fees were. There were there's the need for us to look at the contract that we've signed earlier to see what were in there for all of us. So the, the very people who presided over those documentation will not be allowed to preside over some of those things. So, depending on the majority, it's a democratic institution. Mm. If the majority, the decision that the majority will take is what we'll be going on with. So, we'll meet on Monday. If it is a decision of the majority of the clubs that we should call for emergency congress, we have a quota. We will get those clubs to sign a resolution to the Ghana Football Association to organize an emergency congress. We don't have that power to hold our Congress, but we can only ship the GFA to call an emergency Congress. We will go there and take a decision that will be the, in the supreme interest of Ghana. You, you know, one of the confusions that has come, or one of the issues that have come up strongly uh, in the midst of this chaos is that uh, the GFA has too much power, and that's the reason why people were even thinking that um, government didn't have the right to dissolve uh, GFA because it was under FIFA's um, you know, jurisdiction and government didn't have the right to do that. So if we want to dissolve the GFA, what do you make of the laws governing the GFA? Um, do they need some amendment? amendments? We need some amendments, seriously. Uh, you rightly said that power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts, absolutely. And I think that we vested too much power into the hands of the presidency. Previously, even the emergency, the executive committee, no, the emergency committee was by election. 
So when the two, 22 executive committee members meet, then elections will be conducted to get five, no, four of them, in addition to the president. Will be, there will be an election to elect the vice. Then there will be another election to elect three more people to join them as members for MCO. But before the last elections, we got the status and regulation changed. And that responsibility was given to the president to appoint. That was the reason why he appointed the vice and disappointed him by sacking him mm. a couple of weeks ago. We think that we've vested too much power into the presidency. So these are some of the considerations we'll be uh, bringing up to see how we could cure those things. You come to uh, the RFS. We have 10 regional chairmen. Uh, what do we do with them? You have 10 clubs. Should we increase the number of the regions? Do we increase the number of the clubs? Do we still keep uh, the 22? We decrease or increase. So these are some of And unfortunately for us, last season, we couldn't have a Congress. So even the amendments that we were going to take to Congress to do to our status and uh, regulations was not done because of the court. You know, we were supposed to go to Congress and there was this court injunction. So all those things are pile up that we need to go to Congress. And so it's, it, you will say that it's uh, a misfortune in disguise. This will, should give us the opportunity to go back and look at our rules and regulations, mm. amend them to suit uh, the present day needs and requirements of the game. Right, so you're still watching uh, PM Express and we've been having very deep conversations about the GFA and its activities. And you just heard Kujo Fianu say that the laws, if we're dissolving the GFA, that we must also amend the laws that govern the GFA and football in Ghana. We'll take a break on PM Express. When we come back, there is more to talk about. Please don't go away. Welcome back. We're still on PM Express. We're talking about uh, Kwesi Nyantichi's resignation. We also know that FIFA has slapped him with a three-month ban on all football activities, and we're trying to digest the issues for your consumption. But let me get on to Facebook, because a lot of your comments are there. And uh, I will start with Daniel Goodness, who says, I expect Nana Nimo Kafui Ado and Baumia Ayete Fre. <laughs> To be doing same but because of this honesty they wouldn't all that the man said are public knowledge which the mpp and the president can't tell us they know nothing about well i have no idea of what you're talking about you just need to present evidence uh, to back this allegation and derek ufuri says <coughs> shaking my head this man is funny the best of, uh, to the best of my knowledge, I guess he doesn't hold any position, let alone even resign. FIFA's ban came before this letter. He has been banned, and that's the fact. Shame. In Shiraba, uh, Trinibua says, uh, Christine Antichi said he won't contest again several times. But when the purported investors met with him with their proposals to sponsor the football, because of greed and looking at his personal gains, he had a change of mind to contest again. Uh, Nyantechi told Songo his time is not up, and I want to ask on behalf of Songo if still his time is not up. Uh, Seb Blatter waste na not sad for him because he the exit with money. Pa, okay, not sad for him. I guess that's what he wanted to say. And uh, Galazi says GFA is irrelevant. It's been dissolved many hours ago. The sports minister referred to. It's yesterday, uh, him yesterday as a former GFE president. His dignity has already capsized. So where from this? This man is too stubborn. He should go to the village and do farming with uh, the much he gained from the presidency. No social entity will entertain him in anything. And Albert JC says, yes, the die hard cut. School boys are young, as the saying goes. Proudness, pompous, that let the dragon snake Lucifer Satan fall from heaven. Yes, it's true that no position is permanent. Rest, we see, either in peace or oh, that's a bit too harsh. Ni Senya Joseph says the first Ghanaian in history to receive a resignation fee higher than his pension pay from no other person but Anas. Hope Anas bribed me one day to get bribed me one day to get me sacked and even make it look like I resigned. Back we see. In fact, as the six thousand uh, sixty-five thousand dollars 
it must be refunded how can fifa determine how our taxpayers money is used fifa kept quiet at the brazil world cup saga and also kept mute when five million dollars was the budget for an afcon whose ultimate price was 1.5 million fire burn fifa alfred the chancellor says ah nyanti chipa we have even dissolved the gfa and you said you have resigned from where Corruption or what? Massa, this is not a breaking news, please. And Sami Kujo says, so he wouldn't have resigned if FIFA had not banned him. Before distraction, the heart of man is a hearty. This should serve as a very good lesson to all of us. Those are very interesting comments. And Kweku Kwaku does it says Asem Tumia Kebima Miu Nana my friend that's the song Kwesi is playing in his car just now his driver just informed me like seriously <laughs> and Jamaica Hood says from my research most men with tribal marks on their right hand side cheek are very bad you can check that from head A <laughs> all right uh, so many comments coming there it's very interesting the comments coming, uh, could you, uh, if you know, you've been <laughs> seeing some of the comments, yeah, some of them. <laughs> I, I love them, yes. They try to make jokes out of Very interesting. Yeah. But you see, th it brings back that conversation of how powerful the GFE president was. Now, you remember George uh, Efri, yeah. who was sacked as the vice, and uh, people are, are like, how can this happen? I mean, the president has too much power. You agree? Uh, that's why I said yes. Mm. We We... A craft tea man, we did very well for us, and he took advantage of the successes. And we all have to admit that we have led him into to this because we gave him too much uh, power. Okay. And I said earlier before the break that for the emergency committee, it was by election. But the last Congress before election, we decided it should be appointment. So we gave him two much power and uh, that was what led him into into this so i think we need to look at the so in reconstituting the gfa we're talking about administration we're talking about referees we're talking about the leadership yeah. let's start with the leadership what kind of power or what kind of limitation would you want giving to the president fifa Before we even talk of yeah fifa fifa had come out with for this. term limitation now previously that was why he, he made it to 13 years okay if it were if there were to be limitations, maybe four years, two terms, you are off, you will have gone after eight years. Like the presidency. Yeah, like the presidency. Or five years for two terms, ten years, you will have left. Mm. You wouldn't have even uh, maybe changed his mind to contest. Right. Well, these are some of the, the, the checks we want to bring in. Now, uh, do we... Now, the two club men have shown some level of integrity. Okay. J.F. Mensa and Lawyer Ia. Mm. And the culprits that were, 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 were caught on the video, three of them happened to be three executive committee members. Okay. So we need to look at that balance. And uh, because it is said that the one who pays the paper calls the tune. Mm. We form one of the major income generation units okay. when it comes to the FIFA, okay. when it comes to GFA. So I think we need to look at all those things that I can say, I can sit here in the comfort of the air conditioning here yeah, and say what I want. But the final decision will be at the general meeting that will move on to become an emergency congress mm -hmm. where all these decisions decision will be taken. But I think that we ought to learn very good lessons from what has happened, the, the, the level of power that we've granted. Now, let me talk about this issue of government, 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 interference and stuff. I want to say here that even though the GFA manages the national teams, for instance, from, right from the black stars down to the bl black maidens or black princesses, all their bills are footed by the government. Of course. Even where they lodge in the GFA facilities in Pram Pram, government pays some token okay. for maintenance costs. We are not like Germany where Mercedes-Benz will pick up the sponsorship of the national team. So the German Federation will not go to government looking for money to write a national team. Mm. But in our case, we have to go to government for almost everything. Mm. Now, even when you come to club level, uh, Cape Coast Missouri Dwarfs, they play at the new Cape Coast Stadium. 
when you look at the numbers, what the government get gets in form of maintenance costs, the government subsidizes a, a lot. So government is contributing a lot. Somebody will argue that, yes, government should give us a platform for social activities and stuff like that. But we are, the clubs are supposed to be limited liability companies or companies registered, limited by guarantee. Mm. So they are supposed to work for profit. So government could say, look, now if you want to use the Cape Coast Stadium, you want to use the Kumasi Sports Stadium, you want to use the Accra Sports Stadium or Tamale Stadium, pay so much before you, you play. So the government is also contributing in bits and pieces. But to say that they should not be in there, we are not saying that government should say, this is the person I want to be the president of the FA. They must have some interest. And what happened to uh, the GFA? The embarrassment is not limited to the FA alone. No? It's spread across. All Ghanaians are feeling that embarrassment. The government has been embarrassed. And this thing had moved beyond the shores of Ghana. A Kenyan referee had, had, who was welcome bound had been withdrawn. Uh, before I came here, I, wrote, I read an apology letter from one of the Gambian referees who took $500. Mm. According to the statement, he, he used to be the role model of the young generation of referees, referees. emerging. Wow. He's lost it all. He's lost it. Okay. So this is not an issue we need to joke with. Uh, and as I said it earlier, I think we hesitated in taking action ourselves. So has a time come for uh, government to have a rep permanent representation? That one, FIFA will, not, executive commission. FIFA will not allow that. Okay. There are other ways uh, to go about it. Um, and as I said, government spends a lot on our national teams and indirectly also spend on the clubs. Now, there is this uh, idea that government should even help clubs that are playing in the Continental Series. So we are still asking government to assist. So there's the need. We cannot go back to the old system, the old system where government will bring two people, one of which will be elected as the chairman, one will, the, the other one be another member. Then the clubs will also bring two people, one being the vice, even though there were some semblance of election because the clubs elect the vice president mm. and the uh, other member. The, mm. uh, the government also bring in two people to Congress and one will be elected. There was some semblance of election, but it was like uh, the FA chairman at that time was most of the time accountable to government more than the clubs. Okay. So we should find a new way to fine tune our regulations and status to make sure that Yes, it, the, the saying goes that the one who pays the piper calls the tune. And FIFA is also coming up with uh, some reforms to see how they could accommodate, especially from the third world, where we go with pan in hand to government to help us run our game. So I think in the future, these things will be fine-tuned uh, to... to, to well, the fact that uh, the that, that Chi has resigned, we know he doesn't, he sacked his deputy even before he resigned. It means that in reconstituting uh, GFA, we are now going to be looking out for a president who his vice is among the football elites yes. in this country. Who would you tip for that position or yourself? Are you too early in the day? In? Too early in the day, we have been caught, pants down, by this announced expose. We need to sit back, reflect what, is, what has gone wrong. How do we pick up the pieces? It's not just a matter of walking into the office of the FA president and start working. We've hit ground zero, and we need to build up from there. We have to look at the people with the, uh, the requisite qualification, mm. the vision to drive our, uh, our game forward. But for this announcement, Mr. Christian Teji really raised the bar. I think in my, 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 my prelude, I talked about the achievements that he, yeah, he really raised the bar. So we need somebody, if we will not raise the bar, should not drop it. Mm. So we'll look within and see those capable hands. So then some names ha are not coming immediately? Oh, names, now that the resignation, I'm sure the names will start coming up, mm. will start popping up, maybe from tomorrow okay. or in the next few days. Mm. L let's look George, at... Mr. Joyfield already announced his intention to contest. Okay. There are some people tipping you for the job. Are you interested yourself? I need to think through it. Mm. Early days yet, but 
I can I can beat my chest to say that yes, I have what it takes to be the FA president. To be the FA but president. I need the endorsement of the rank and file. Okay. Again, uh, we're looking at uh, how to reform. Let's look at specific areas we need to reform to be able to get a better GFA. They should be holistic. It shouldn't come from the executive committee alone. We have those committees. For instance, a key committee like the disciplinary committee. Most of the challenges we faced, where people go to court, they, they lose so much interest in the adjudicating bodies that they prefer to go to court or go to CAS. So we need to stand in all those. The disciplinary committee is very key. The appeals committee, very key. Uh, the finance committee, that have been dormant, will have to be given a rude reawakening for them to live up to their expectation. Because uh, things, I'm sure, even seen from afar, mm. our finances are not being well controlled. So it is holistic. Okay. All the committees, legal committee, all those things will have to be reconstituted. You need lawyers who have interest in the game. If a lawyer who is so deep in his duty at the court, he wouldn't have time. You end up piling up disciplinary committee cases and the resultant uh, delay in delivering justice. So it, it is holistic. It should be holistic. As I'm, I've already told you, uh, uh, Northern region may be disenfranchised. Eastern region, Great Greater Accra. Accra, the constituent bodies like the women football, yes. Now, on top of that, you have a vacancy there, a gaping hole there for the presidency and the vice presidency. So it is going to be, and for 13 years for one person to be at the helm of affairs. Okay. Yes, there's a need for us to do a serious uh, restructuring. Th this whole cycle, in fact, is a sad time for football. Let's look at how this era is going to impact on Ghana's football and what will be the future of football in Ghana. With it is going to take some time. First of all, we need to win by the confidence of our patrons. Mm. That's and the how do we do that? Yeah, we, do we need to show a strong desire to learn lessons from what happened a couple of few weeks and assure them that there will be no repetition. We should be able to crack the ship. We, we, I cannot sit here and say that we don't know some of these things. We are lucky to know those who are perpetrating some of those things. Harsh decisions. I'm sure the next person who is nurturing the idea of becoming FA president will learn very good lessons from what has happened to our brother and will not repeat the some of the mistakes. Okay, so we need to win back the, the, confidence, the of, confidence of the people. Because at the end of the day, they are the patrons of the end product. Mm. You, you can bring the best players, Messi and the rest, to Ghana. If they decide not to watch the games, mm. you cannot go to their homes and keep them to come to the stadium to watch our game. Okay. So we need to get the supporters back behind us. That's just one, uh, one of the several things yes. we need to do. Checks and balances. Okay, I think there was too much laxity in the system. Too much, too much laxity. Mm. And uh, we need to bring, we should not talk about professionalism only on the field of play. If you talk about laxity, what, what, what exactly? You what need to you get, you need about? to be very conversant with the operations of the FA Secretariat mm. to convince yourself that yes, there's so much laxity, laxity there. there. So all those things. Then we should respect the issue of, issue of corporate governance. Okay. Conflict of interest. Where you have ESCO members Executing projects. Straight conflict of interest. I don't see how uh, multimedia will allow you to bring some contract or something here. If that is not done. Some, it's somebody else's business. Duty. Duty. All these things bring our game into this issue. That was the reason why you saw the FA president drafting a contract, MOU, yeah. on a cuff letterhead overnight overnight quickly an agency why should ghana football alone uh sponsorship fee should be attracting between 20 and 25 percent commission that's ridiculous yes okay how some of these agencies pop up there are some agencies just by the mention of the name you know the guys behind 
those agencies mm -hmm. who are operating in football. Some of them executive committee members. Conflict of interest, straight. So if we sacrifice corporate governance, these are some of the things you see. So I think that these are some of the things that you all have to help us. Mm. And we need the media in this scheme of things a lot. Okay. One, you are the gatekeepers. You have to keep us on our toes. And at the same time, you need to help us to rebrand Ghana football. Right. We need to rebrand it. Otherwise, for the first time, we've, 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 we've loved World Cup football. Ghanaians were looking forward to see the Black Stars in Russia. You know, we were able to make it. Mm. Ghanaians, since 1982, have been yearning for the AFCON. When Ghana won the fourth AFCON, Cameroon had not won once. Okay. But they won, I think, five times. Egypt, about five, six times. So I think that we have a, a lot of work to do. We should, people who take up the job of football should not see football as part time. Mm. Until we agree, yeah, until we agree that it is a full time job mm. that we should dedicate so much time to, too much, so much energy, time, and sense. How long will it take us to come back on our feet? I mean, it depends. I it depends on how we reposition ourselves. It depends on how we reposition ourselves because, as I'm saying that, this thing started. This uh, apathy didn't start overnight. It got to a crescendo after the Brazilian debacle. And they've never forgiven us. Mm. We tried to keep up the enthusiasm back, only to be, for it to be broken again over issues of bonuses and things like that. And I, let me cite this example. I happened to be the vice chairman of the Blaster Management Committee for about two years. We traveled to prepare for the AFCON, an AFCON that we are going to play in Africa. We had to go on a training tour in Europe. We got there and the weather was cold. At variance with what was pertaining in Equatorial Guinea, where the competition would be played. We, when we got to Spain, we played two warm-up matches. And the first game was against the second division side. They were not even properly dressed. They were in their training kit. After the game, players were being paid $5,000 as appearance fee, and I ask myself, what are we doing to Ghana? The following two days, we played another one against another second division side from Europe. Another $5,000. Well, we don't have even good pitches here in Ghana to play. We don't have the right infrastructure. Uh, a, a synthetic pitch, we can construct a, a synthetic pitch, just the pitch alone. Maybe two hundred thousand dollars. We have paid ten thousand dollars for two one match matches to twenty two twenty three players. Just for one match matches. Ah, so I think that we have a lot of house cleaning to, to do, do ourselves. We have a lot of house cleaning. And to we do. don't expect you, Aisha and Co. To come and do it for us. Definitely. We have to do it ourselves you would have to, to win back your yourself. confidence. Definitely. You would have to do it yourself before even uh, the media can support you to do your job. Let me take a few of your comments on Facebook and we'll call it a day. Uh, Josephine says, okay, so he says, what is this government waiting for? Oh yeah, Nanado, follow. We are tired of you. Okay, oh, okay, okay, okay. That's a bit too harsh. Baba Nabu says, uh, call the great Baba now. Uh, if you need, oh, please, and <laughs> uh, these comments are not part of the discussions we're having this evening, but it's been very, very exciting uh, speaking with uh, Kujo Fiano, who is the chairman of Galka, and he's been giving us some insights as to how we can clean our home, the GFA. He says we should win back the confidence of the football fans, and uh, if we're able to do that, that's a huge advantage for, uh, for us in building our football uh, back or confidence in the people back and he wants us to do checks and balances he says there's a lot of laxity at the gfa and then he talks about we must desist from conflict of interest situations at the gfa those are very very interesting ones so 
we multimedia the multimedia group joy news we are going to keep a lion's eye not a tiger eye a lion's eye on all the events unfolding and we'll be updating you on the last minute uh, of events of the Ghana Football Association and all other activities of football in Ghana. That's where we draw the curtains on PM Express. My name is Aisha Prime. Many thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of our programs. <laughs>